Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Pound and I'm back with another video for Chapter 7.1, The Ecological Landscape from Purposeful Designs Life Science. Today we're going to talk about Section 7.1.3 on Ecosystems and the Biosphere. So our objectives today will be to differentiate between biotic and abiotic factors and identify several abiotic factors and cycles that determine the nature of ecosystems. Also, we'll be the other objectives is to explain the need for understanding the complexity of the biosphere to better care for God's creation. So what we're going to be talking about today is ecology, and this is the science of how organisms interact with each other and their environment. As far as the word ecology is concerned, the word eco comes from Greek oikos, which means home. And so what we're talking about is we're talking about the homes of organisms, just like our homes. And in our homes, there's interactions between family members and things within the household, just like in the outside world, organisms interact with their environment. And even in the house, different people have different roles in different jobs, and we're going to find that to be true of organisms as well. We're going to be talking about ecosystems. This is a system in which organisms and their environment interact. And so we can see in the background here a water ecosystem, and we see these uh, Christmas tree worms. These are actually worms attached to coil and coral and there is an interaction there and it looks like there may be a fish over here or something as well or maybe an enemy. Um, and they are interacting. Also ecosystems can be very large and can include the whole earth or they can be very small and be as small as, say, a mud puddle or a log. So when we are talking about ecosystems, we have to define what ecosystem we are talking about. Cycles that determine the nature of an ecosystem include the water cycle. Water is cycled through our ecosystems, and you have studied this before. We have precipitation and groundwater and water in lakes and rivers, and that evaporates off the surface, goes up into the clouds, falls as precipitation, and we have this cycle going on. And that cycle is really worldwide, and different factors affect the water cycle in different areas of the world. So depending upon the water cycle in an area, it, it can determine what type of ecosystem is there. In desert areas, there's not as much water. And in rainforests, there's a lot of water. Also the nitrogen cycle, because this depends on how rich the soil is. So you see here soybean plants in the background, and we talked about this, how they help to enrich the soil with nitrogen compounds um, that they, bacteria, nitrogen fixing bacteria, take the nitrogen from the atmosphere and put them into compounds. Also, the oxygen and carbon dioxide cycle. Here we see plants which take carbon dioxide and produce oxygen and food for the cow. And the cow produces carbon dioxide, which the plants then use. And this oxygen and carbon dioxide cycle keep a balance in the ecosystems. Now ecosystems, a lot of time, as you're going from one ecosystem to another, there is a transition zone. These are areas between ecosystems, and sometimes they're gradual and sometimes they're not. Some areas have more of a transition zone than others, but you can see here there's a transition zone. We have the ocean over here which is a saltwater ecosystem. Then there is the beach and then we get into more trees. And so you can see that transition there. A lot of wetlands act as transition zones as well between different ecosystems. And you will find different organisms living in each of these areas, in the ocean and then the transition zone and in the forest here. 
And finally, all ecosystems are part of the biosphere. And the biosphere is the part of Earth and its atmosphere in which living organisms exist. So wherever you find something living on Earth, it is part of the what we call the biosphere, which is the living sphere on Earth. And it can be very high on top of mountains um, where we might maybe find some of those extremophiles or very deep into the oceans. They, wherever something is living, it's part of the biosphere. And in our biosphere, we have biotic factors. These are a living component of an ecosystem. And examples are bacteria, moss, plants, animals, anything that is alive is a biotic factor in the biosphere. There are also abiotic factors. These are non-living components of an ecosystem and examples are air, water, rock, soil, light, and temperature. Now for an assignment here at the end that I want to then share during class time, so you're going to have to do some thinking on your own here, I want you to identify and describe a typical ecosystem where you live. Discuss three ways in which the climate in the area affects the ecosystem. I want you to work on this so that we can discuss what you wrote in class. Now, as we talk about ecology, this is a really important thing because remember I said that the root word of eco is home in Greek. And so this, the earth, the biosphere is our home and we have a responsibility to take care of it because of the creation mandate. And also because God has given it to us as our home and as a gift. And if we ruin that gift, we affect our health. We affect the health of all of the creatures that God has given to us as stewards. So part of the study of ecology is to determine how to best use the resources God has given us on our planet. And a lot of times we do have to strike a balance between human uses and what is good for humans and what is also good for the planet. But if we do not take care of our planet, then we will also be affecting ourselves and our health um, because of pollution and different things. So we really have to be concerned about this topic and how best to take care of the wonderful gift that God gave us as our home, the earth. Now our objectives today were to differentiate between biotic and abiotic factors and identify several abiotic factors and cycles that determine the nature of ecosystems and to explain the need for understanding the complexity of the biosphere to better care for God's creation. Don't forget your five questions in your notes and keep watching to answer the questions at the end.